Hi and welcome to another A-level biology video with starfish revision. This one is all about enzymes. It will cover how enzymes work and why they are specific. We'll look at factors affecting enzyme activity and also enzyme inhibition. Enzymes are proteins. They catalyze the thousands of biochemical reactions that take place in our cells all day long, from respiration to DNA replication. Each of these reactions are controlled by a different enzyme. So enzymes need to be very specific to the substrate that they're acting on. They do this by having an active site. This is a region of the protein that has a very specific shape that's complementary to just one other molecule, the substrate. To learn more about protein structure, click the link in the description. There are two theories on how an enzyme fits to its substrate. The first is the lock and key theory. Here, the substrate fits exactly into the active site like a key fits into a lock. The second theory, which most scientists now prefer, is the induced fit model. Here, the substrate must not only be a very similar shape to the active site, but it must make the active site change shape slightly to accommodate it. This explains the high specificity of enzymes a lot better. You might know from chemistry that a catalyst lowers the activation energy that is needed for a reaction to take place. Enzymes work in the same way. On this graph, we can see that a certain amount of energy is needed to get the reaction to begin. But if an enzyme is added, the reaction doesn't need as much energy to start. There are four factors that affect enzyme activity. As temperature rises, the rate of reaction increases because the molecules have more kinetic energy. However, at a certain temperature, some of the bonds in the enzyme break and it loses the shape of its active site permanently. We say the enzyme becomes denatured. This occurs at around 40 degrees Celsius for many enzymes, but some can function at very high temperatures. Enzymes are very sensitive to pH. Every enzyme will have a very narrow range of optimum pH. Outside of this range, the enzyme quickly becomes denatured. Most enzymes have an optimum pH of around 7, which is neutral but the enzymes in our stomach work best at a very acidic pH 2. Obviously, if we increase the concentration of the enzyme, the rate of reaction will increase. There are more active sites available. The rate may level off though if the substrate is limited. A similar thing happens with substrate concentration. If we increase the substrate concentration, more enzyme substrate complexes form. But once every active site is working at full capacity, the rate cannot go up any further unless more enzyme is added. That's why the graph levels off. Last of all, let's look at enzyme inhibition. There are two main ways that enzymes can be inhibited. The first category is competitive inhibition and the second is non-competitive inhibition. A competitive inhibitor is a molecule that is similar in shape to the substrate and so can bind to the enzyme's active site, blocking it from the substrate. The graph shows how the rate of reaction changes as the substrate concentration increases. At low substrate levels, the inhibitor 
outcompetes the substrate. So the reaction rate is lower. But at a higher substrate level, the substrate starts to outcompete the inhibitor. And so the rate reaches almost its optimal level. Non-competitive inhibitors attach to the enzyme at a point other than its active site. But in doing so, they cause a change to the shape of the active site, so that the substrate can no longer bind. Because increasing the substrate concentration can't stop the inhibitor from binding, raising the substrate concentration does not have much effect on the rate of reaction, and it remains low. So that's it for enzymes. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.